Hi there. So in this video, we're going to continue talking about the PI3 kinase AKT pathway and uh, how AKT is regulated. That's what we're going to focus on in this video. So AKT, a very important protein in intracellular signaling, can signal into many different pathways into the cell that control the cell cycle, that control apoptosis, protein production, metabolism, differentiation, all sorts of things. So AKT can feed into a lot of different pathways. It's important to understand how AKT is regulated. In a previous video, we covered the PIP2 and PIP3, which are these lipid modified sugars that are embedded in the plasma membrane. And these sugars are regulated by kinases like PI3K and P10, a phosphatase. So that was a previous video. We talked about how PIP2 can be converted to PIP3 and how PIP3 can be converted into PIP2. And now we're going to talk about what PIP3 does, how it can signal into the cell through a protein called AKT. Um, and I'll remind you that PIP3, um, uh, when it exists in the cell, can bind a domain of that's found in many proteins called a pH domain. So the pH domain has high affinity for the PIP3 molecule. Okay, so <clears throat> let's talk about a cell that's in G1. So in most cells that are in G1, there's a high level of PIP2, right? So remember, it's got two phosphates hanging off of the, um, the inositol sugar. And so we're going to introduce some new proteins now. So one protein we're going to introduce is called PDK1, and the other protein is AKT, which is a very important central signaling kinase. But before we get into AKT, we've got to talk about PDK1. We've got to introduce what PDK1 is, and how it's regulated. Right? For all these proteins, we really have to talk about how these proteins are regulated, and we're also going to focus on how they are dysregulated in many human cancers. So let's start with PDK1. We don't always talk about the names of all of these proteins, what all these letters stand for. Sometimes the letters are actually informative, and sometimes they're not informative. So when they are informative, I'll tell you. For example, PDK1 actually stands for something that means something in this pathway. So PDK1 is um, a protein um, called PIP3-dependent kinases. That's what PDK stands for, PIP3-dependent kinase. It is a protein kinase. What kind of protein kinase? A serine-threonine kinase. So we will phosphorylate its substrates on serine and threonine residues. And it's regulated. How is it regulated? Well, it says right in the name. It's dependent on PIP3. So the presence of PIP3 will activate um, this kinase. What else can we know about this kinase? It um, has a pH domain. So again, a domain of a protein, um, a region that's going to allow the protein to do something. The pH domain, we know pH domains have high affinity for PIP3. So we can say that about PDK1. Um, I can tell you if, if it's a kinase, it must phosphorylate some things. So I'll tell you two substrates of PDK1 itself, it can phosphorylate itself, and it can phosphorylate AKT. But in cells that are in G1, typically PDK1 is not phosphorylated, and I'll show you there the serine at position 241 is the site of phosphorylation by itself. And I'll also mention that the kinase activity of PDK1, not active during the G1 phase of the cell cycle, typically. So that's our introduction to PDK1, that enzyme. Now let's introduce this new enzyme, a very important enzyme called AKT. Um, the name, not informative, so we're not gonna talk about what those letters stand for. Uh, AKT, it is a kinase. What kind of kinase? A serine threonine kinase. So it will phosphorylate its substrates on serine and threonine residues. Um, we should mention here that actually there's a gene family the AKT gene family. So there's just one AKT. There are multiple AKTs in the human genome. There's AKT1, AKT2, AKT3. They're all kinases. They all work and are regulated similarly. There are definitely differences of the AKTs. Um, some play more of a role in growth, uh, uh, regulating the cell cycle, differentiation, all sorts of processes, depending on which cell types that we're in. Some express AK3 three more than two or two more than one. We're just gonna talk in generalities in these videos about AKT, mostly focusing on AKT1 and um, focusing on the role of AKT in cancer. Um, 
cell development. So we'll just talk about, in general, AKTs. They more or less all work the same and are regulated the same. But there are differences. The other thing we'll introduce here about AKT is that um, it has another name. And we've encountered this in other videos, for example, with EGFR, the EGFR family, also known as ERBB, also known as HER. So again, why do proteins have multiple names? It depends on uh, who discovers it and how they publish it under that name, and then somebody else discovers it and publishes it under another name. So originally when AKT was uh, discovered, it was actually called PKB for protein kinase B. So researchers who were studying kinases um, identified a bunch of kinases and then gave them names like protein kinase A, protein kinase B, protein kinase C. And in fact, there is a PKA, a PKB, a PKC. And so PKB actually turns out to be AKT. So AKT was given to, uh, the name was given by another researcher discovering, uh, researching this kinase in another setting. And again, when researchers uh, are calling the same protein two different names, if those names have been adopted and have been published a lot, the names end up sticking. So sometimes uh, you will see it called AKT or PKB. Many oftentimes it will say AKT slash PKB. Same protein, same thing. So we can introduce that about AKT. Um, what else can we say about AKT? We can say that AKT has a pH domain. It can also bind PIP3. Um, we can introduce some uh, sites of phosphorylation AKT. So let's introduce a threonine at position 308 and a serine at position 473. So these are going to be important for regulating the activity of AKT. Um, AKT is a kinase, it must phosphorylate things. It has over a hundred different substrates. So it can phosphorylate and regulate many proteins that play many roles of the cell. So, we're, and we'll cover those in later videos. Um, and the last thing we'll say here, when cells are in G1, you'll see that those, that threonine and serine, typically not phosphorylated, and the kinase activity of AKT, not active. So in G1, typically AKT is not phosphorylating its substrates because AKT is not active. Okay, so we set up what's going to happen, uh, set up the players for when we go into S phase. So if the cell gets a signal to grow, let's say the cell is exposed to growth factors that bind growth factor receptors, that will trigger the activation of PI3 kinase, which we covered in previous videos, how PI3 kinase is regulated. And so you should hopefully recall at least two different ways that PI3 kinase can be regulated and convert PIP2 into PIP3. So PIP3 kinase will phosphorylate PIP2s, creating PIP3s, then we have PIP3s in the cell. What's PIP3 going to do? We introduced, we talked about PIP3 as a signaling molecule. How does PIP3 send a signal? Well, proteins that have a pH domain bind PIP3. And when they bind PIP3, well, they can uh, change their conformation, they can change their activity, they can be brought in pro close proximity with their substrates. And so that's exactly what's going to happen here. So when PIP3 is present in the cells, these two proteins, AKT and PK, uh, PDK1, will both bind PIP3, right? And you can see now that these proteins are in close proximity with one another. When I drew them before, just in the cytoplasm, they could be anywhere in the cytoplasm of the cell. So they don't have to be near each other. And we know that PDK1, not really active. Now these proteins are brought to the plasma membrane, to the lumen, the, uh, the inside surface of the plasma membrane, PDK1 binds, PDK1 activates, this binding triggers activation. Um, and so when PDK1 becomes active, it will actually phosphorylate itself, right? PDK1 is a kinase, and we said it has, uh, we were talking about two substrates of PDK1, so we'll take a phosphate from ATP, put it on itself. This helps keep PDK1 in an active state. And now that PDK1 is active and near its other substrate, What's it going to do? It's going to phosphorylate its substrate, which is AKT. So now AKT becomes phosphorylated on the threonine at position 308 by PDK1. Another phosphorylation event occurs um, using a kinase, which we're not going to get into because its regulation is a little more complicated and um, we just want to go, don't go down that road. But there is another kinase that will phosphorylate AKT on the serine at position 473. 
which kinase can be referred to as either PDK2 or uh, mTOR complex 2, so mTOR C2. Either way, we're not going to talk about how that kinase is regulated, but we are going to say that that kinase, with the kinase, will phosphorylate AKT on serine 473. So AKT becomes phosphorylated on these two key residues, the threonine and the serine. And when AKT is phosphorylated on these two key residues, that will activate AKT's kinase activity. So G1, AKT not phosphorylated on those residues, not active. AKT is now phosphorylated. And so again, the phosphorylation was triggered by AKT binding to PIP3, PDK1 binding to PIP3, um, something happening to mTORC2, which we're not gonna get into. But now that AKT is phosphorylated, it is active and it can detach from PIP3 because it no longer needs uh, that binding to occur on uh, its pH domain. And AKT can go into the cytoplasm, it can go into the nucleus, and it can phosphorylate over a hundred different substrates, over a hundred different proteins, and regulate the activity of all those proteins. So uh, AKT, very important protein, regulates so many proteins within the cell. And we're going to get into... Uh, uh, other videos that will actually talk about what those proteins are and all those pathways that uh, AKT regulates, but that's another video. Um, before we leave this video, we're going to talk about AKT's role in human cancers. In most human cancers, not all, but in most, let's say many human cancers, the AKT protein is phosphorylated and active. Uh, and when it's phosphorylated and active, it's phosphorylating many of those substrates that are regulating the cell cycle and regulating apoptosis. So this allows cancer cells to continually grow, go through the cell cycle and divide, as well as uh, prevent those cells from undergoing apoptosis. So cancer cells are not dying when they really should be because they're uh, genetic freaks and they really should be dying, but they're not. The AKT pathway is keeping them alive and they keep going through the cell cycle. So the AKT pathway is very important in understanding human cancer. Why is the AKT pathway always active in human cancers? It, most of the time, it is due to mutations upstream that regulate AKT. So if you think about, well, what regulates AKT? Well, we just said it was PDK1, but that's regulated by PIP3. We know PIP3 is regulated by PDK, by P3 kinase and P10. We know those are regulated by... RAS and receptor tyrosine kinases. So the most common upstream regulators that are mutated in human cancers that can affect AKT directly are the ones I've listed here. And we've talked about these in previous videos. So when PEI3 kinase is amplified, you're gonna have high levels of PIP3, AKT is gonna be activated. When P10 is deleted, you're not going to convert PIP3 back into PIP2, AKT is going to be active. When RAS is constantly bound to GTP, that will activate P3 kinase. When receptor tyrosine kinases are constantly phosphorylated on the tyrosines of their cytoplasmic tails, P3 kinase will become activated. And that will lead to AKT phosphorylation and activation. So in most human cancers, uh, if you look at, let's say many human cancers, if you look at the AKT protein, you're going to find it phosphorylated and active. And so this brings us to um, looking, uh, reading cancer research articles. A lot of times uh, researchers will look at the AKT protein, the AKT pathway to see if it's playing, a, how, how the role it's playing in keeping those cells alive and kind of getting through the cell cycle, as well as um, will drugs stop the AKT pathway and prevent the cells from going through the cell cycle and allow cells to undergo apoptosis. So in many cancer research articles, you will find uh, Western blots that look at the AKT protein. And they're typically looking at two things. They'll look at the total level of AKT protein. So you can see in this Western blot on the sort of bottom panel, just an antibody that detects regular AKT total, phosphorylated, unphosphorylated, doesn't matter, just total AKT protein. On the upper part of that Western blot, an antibody is used to detect just 
the phosphorylation state of AKT. Is AKT phosphorylated or is it not phosphorylated? And so in most human cancers, this is what you would see. AKT is present and it is phosphorylated. And when treating cells with drugs that would maybe stop cancer cells from growing, drugs that let's say target the receptor tyrosine kinases or target P3 kinase, for example, um, those drugs would um, prevent the creation of PIP3. And if you're preventing PIP3 from being created, then AKT will no longer get phosphorylated, it won't be active, and it won't be signaling through the cell cycle, it won't be inhibiting apoptosis. So in many of the research articles, when they're adding drugs to cells, you see AKT no longer phosphorylated. And that's what you see there when I wrote plus drug. Let's say you add some drug that inhibits the EGF receptor. So you add some drug that inhibits P3 kinase. Then what you would hope to see is that AKT, even though the protein is present, it is no longer phosphorylated, which means it's no longer active, which means it's not promoting the cell cycle and it's not inhibiting apoptosis. So hopefully in this video, you have learned about how AKT is regulated um, and how AKT is overactive in human cancers. In the next series of videos, we will talk about all the substrates of AKT, not all the substrates, there's over 100, uh, many of the important substrates of AKT.